In this video, I want to show you how to optimize your methylation without having to take methyl donors directly. I know it sounds somewhat self-contradictory, but you will understand what I mean in a second. The video will be especially helpful for anyone that has problems taking normal methylation supplements like TMG, methylcobalamin, or SAMe. But before we do that, let's first explain what methylation actually is. You probably already know if you're watching this video, but let's just make sure we're on the same page. You can think of methylation as an on-off switch in your body. Your body basically takes methyl groups, which are one carbon molecule bound to three hydrogen molecules, and then attaches it to other molecules. This can be DNA, it can be neurotransmitters or hormones. Attaching this methyl group to these molecules then changes their behavior. It can upregulate them, it can downregulate them, or help excrete them from your body. What that means is that proper methylation is crucial for optimal health. It's important for energy production, for mental health, and for copying DNA properly. Some examples include the neurotransmitter melatonin, which is synthesized from serotonin, which is basically methylated, so a methyl group is attached to it. It's also necessary for the production of glutathione, which is extremely important for detoxification. And without enough methyl groups, your body cannot break down histamine, which your immune system releases, for example, when you have allergies. Now, in healthy people, all of this works fine and without problems. But there are some people that have methylation issues. Usually, these issues are related to certain genes that are responsible for methylation enzymes. You often hear MTHFR or COMT, for example. I'm not going to get into methylation testing in this video. I explain the intricacies and problems with normal genetic tests in a different video. But generally, methylation issues are grouped into either undermethylators or overmethylators. Undermethylators lack enough methyl groups, so their body cannot methylate correctly. And overmethylators have too many methyl groups in their body, so their methylation activity is higher than optimal. The following advice is targeted to people who are undermethylated because they make up the bulk of all people with methylation issues. Usually, they are prescribed methylation supplements that are called methyl donors. These are nutrients that readily give up methyl groups and can increase your methyl levels in your body. They can be things like SAMe, which is a derivative of the amino acid methionine, TMG, so trimethylglycine, which is also called betaine, or methylcobalamin, so activated vitamin B12. The problem is that some people don't tolerate these supplements. They get nasty side effects and generally feel worse instead of better. Now, you obviously want to try things like lowering the dosage and talking to an experienced professional first. But what many people aren't aware of is that there is a workaround to this. You can actually increase the methylation in your body or the availability of methyl groups without having to supplement methyl donors directly. This workaround is very simple, and I actually already talked about it in one of my other videos on creatine and methylation. Basically, what you do is instead of taking methyl donors directly, you supplement other nutrients that are methyl sparing or methyl conserving. These are compounds or nutrients that require a lot of methyl groups to be made. By taking them directly, your methylation doesn't need to work as hard as it normally does. Basically, instead of taking the raw materials, you take the end product for which the raw materials would have been used up. And that way you free up methyl groups that can be used for other reactions in your body. The most important nutrients slash compounds here are creatine, phosphatidylcholine, carnitine, and melatonin. Now, of all these compounds, by far the most important is creatine. I've seen figures from 40 to 70% of methylation being used up just for the synthesis of creatine in your body. This is also the reason creatine supplementation has been so promising in things like depression and energy production. Creatine just helps conserve methyl groups and therefore indirectly increases your methylation. In second place comes phosphatidylcholine, which might make a difference of 20 to 30%. A good phosphatidylcholine supplement would be sunflower lecithin, which is fairly cheap and can be bought almost anywhere in the world. 
Carnitine and melatonin won't have as big an impact, but you can definitely try them out and see how your body reacts to them. Now that we talked about methyl sparing supplements, we also need to talk about things that use up a lot of methyl groups that you want to avoid if you want to indirectly increase your methylation. Most of these you don't want in your system anyway, but just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, you want to avoid a heavy load of toxic metals in your body, excess estrogen, too much stress, and also too much alcohol. All of them either block methylation from occurring or use up a lot of methyl groups to be detoxified from your body. And lastly, we also have methyl binders. These aren't necessarily harmful substances, but instead nutrients that bind or mop up a lot of free methyl groups. These are usually useful for overmethylated patients, but would be detrimental for someone who's already undermethylated. The first is niacin, so vitamin B3. And next you have methylfolate, which sounds contradictory, I know. Methylfolate is both a methyl donor and a methyl binder, so the reaction is somewhat individual to everyone. But in some people, the net effect can definitely be negative. This is something many practitioners aren't aware of, and therefore they falsely prescribe methylfolate to all undermethylators. Now, of course, all this doesn't mean you never want to consume these nutrients either. They are critical to health after all. But what you want to avoid is over supplementing or superdosing them if you are an undermethylator. Of course, they can in some situations be used as an antidote if you have methyl reactions, for example, when you first try out methyl donors. Especially niacin can be helpful here, but this is something very individual and should probably be discussed with your practitioner. Okay, to wrap up this video, let's summarize the most important learning points again. Methylation can be supported by things other than direct methyl donors. Oftentimes an indirect approach where you supplement methyl sparing nutrients is more gentle and you will face less side effects. You will see the biggest effect from creatine supplements and in second place we have phosphatidylcholine, which I recommend you take in the form of sunflower lecithin. On top of that, you also want to reduce harmful methyl burners and keep an eye on methyl binders. Again, all of this applies to undermethylators. If you're an overmethylator, please disregard what I said in this video. I hope you liked it and I see you in the next one.